U.S. government is about to declare a new war, this one on a virtual enemy. A string of attacks on government websites by hackers has driven American policymakers into a state of high alert over a so-called terrorist threat. Some doubt, though, that the danger exists. RT's Lucy Kafanov reports from Washington. It may seem like a quiet day in America, but to some, it's the scene of a raging battle, invisible to the naked eye. Well, there is war underway right now on the Internet. This is cyber war. Is the U.S. ready for a full-scale cyber war? A question asked at the highest levels of the U.S. government, stoked by fears of a new type of WMD. A weapon of mass disruption. In a world where... Acts of terror could come not only from a few extremists in suicide vests, but from a few keystrokes on the computer. The FBI warns that those keystrokes could soon be more dangerous to America than terrorism itself. Uh, the cyber threat will equal or surpass the threat from counterterrorism in the foreseeable future. A future that's got the world's military superpower preparing for the fight ahead. That the next Pearl Harbor that we confront could very well be a cyber attack that uh, cripples our uh, our power systems, our, our grid. Cyber war, cyber Pearl Harbor. Frightening language for a hypothetical scenario, one that could happen, but hasn't yet. And some security experts like Jim Harper warn that it never will. There's no chance whatsoever that nuclear power plants will be hacked, that electric infrastructure will be hacked and taken down for any significant period of time. So the worst we can expect is disruption. Uh, that's not war. It doesn't really terrorize. So the threats are serious, but they're not to the level of war or terror. Yet some of the key leaders in the war on terror are now in the business of cyber war. Michael Chertoff once ran the Department of Homeland Security. He now runs a cybersecurity consulting firm. You could have a cyber attack that would be as consequential in terms of the economy, and maybe even in terms of, of loss of life, as things we typically associate with war fighting. Once America's top spy chief, Mike McConnell now oversees cyber operations for a defense contracting giant. We're the most vulnerable nation on earth to a cyber attack. And anti-terrorism czar Richard Clark went from advising presidents on cyber security to publishing books about the coming cyber war. For once, it would be nice for the United States to be able to get out in front of a catastrophe, uh, to be able to prevent that catastrophe. We know how to do it. We just need to spend the money. And the money is flowing. The U.S. government will spend more than $10 billion a year on cybersecurity by 2015 in a worldwide market that's estimated at 80 to $140 billion a year. The budget that we're releasing today. It's one of the few areas where the White House plans to increase spending despite other defense cuts. And that, some say, is the problem. It's going to be even more tempting uh, for folks in the, uh, you know, the defense contracting community, for example, to hype cyber threats because that's one of the few streams of money that, you know, sort of still exists. Forbes magazine contributor Sean Lawson is an expert in cybersecurity. It's a classic case of an attempt to sort of motivate a response by rallying the troops by appealing to fear, appealing to uncertainty. And inside the Beltway, fear and uncertainty can lead to big business and big bucks. Most people don't understand the problems with computer and data security. Most people in Washington don't understand, and specifically most people in Congress don't understand. Uh, therefore, the quote-unquote Beltway bandits are in a position to, to create the problem, to state the problem, and offer their own services as a solution. A battle does rage here, invisible to the naked eye. A war for money, contracts, and power. Lucy Kalfanov, RT, Washington.